Tembu. Dotem Tembu. Unmute your microphone. The microphone is muted. You can't hear. Yes. Perfect. Uh-uh. People have. Request. Can you hear me now? Yes. Perfect. <laughs> Thank you very much. This technology man. Yes. Uh, first of all, I would like to thank the committee for the invitation that they've extended to us as ordinary South Africans. My name is C. Port Dumisani Joseph Mtembo. I am the member of the WAT committee in WAT 14, Brayton, Msugaligua, under the Hafsibande District Municipality. I was requested by our WAT councillor to make this representation on behalf of the area. So first of all, what I would like to say, Joseph Mtimbu, I would like to give you a brief background of our area. I am actually talking to you directly from Brayton, a small town, which was the smallest mining town. What in cold and farming all around. One can uh, to make this, this area had a lot of sheep during the upper date times. So first and of upper all, what we arrived in this area. Like so when we had this opportunity that we should come in here and make our representation about the amendment to this bill, we felt very much happy because there is a lot of issues that are taking place in our area concerning the Land Tenure Act. As I've mentioned to you before, that this area is primarily agricultural and rural. Brayton is between Emelo and Carolina, which is about 30 kilometers northeast of Emelo. This whole area was rich in coal and minerals, which still is, and had a lot of agricultural activities taking place. So the people of the area primarily survive on mining as the source of employment and income. And agriculture has also been one of our greatest employer in the area. But uh, with the advent of democracy, we saw the decline of agriculture in this area. I will explain to you what has happened. The white farm in and around Brayton left their farms. Some of them were made up. Some of them felt not safe because of the advent of democracy. And we also had a lot of farm murderers in the area, farm evictions in the area as well. So we feel that the amendment of this bill will actually assist us in making sure that we stop all of these social ills that are taking place in this area. Um, I will start by talking about the economic activities of this area. Most of our people here live in the townships, and some of them live in the surrounding farms. Unfortunately, these surrounding farms that they live in, most of them have now been bought by mining magnates, and after doing that, these mining magnates, they open up mining operations in these areas. The problem is that most of these farm dwellers, they get evicted from these farms because of the new owners. We therefore feel that the amendment of this bill will assist in making sure that these people continue to have tenure rights in the land that they've been living in, even before the new owners come in. But due to the lack of enforcement of the laws in this country, our people continue to be evicted from these farms. And even if we try to intervene, the farmers themselves stop us from entering their land, which leaves us powerless. We can't even help our own people. And secondly, 
I also think that it will be very much important that uh, the Department of Land and Agriculture must also come up with a, a workshop of trying to educate our people about their rights, and in particular, this bill, because these laws exist in this country, but the people that are supposed to benefit from these laws do not know anything about then you find that the white farmers continue to do what they used to do during apartheid. So can you please, in that regard, help our people to understand and know these laws so that they can know what rights do they have. Another problem that we have here, there is a huge mine that operates in and around Brighton. These mines, most of them do not have their social labor plans. And every time you ask for their social labor plans, the problem starts there. They tell us that this document is not a document that they're supposed to share with the community, but is a document between themselves and the Department of DMR, which causes a lot of tension in the area. And the young people of the area are very much interested in agriculture, but they do not have access to the land because most of the farms and the land available here has been bought by this big mining magnate here. We don't understand how does this happen because some of the land has been given back to our people, but we're not sure whether our people are selling the land back to the mine so that they continue doing mining. But what happens in the meantime is that when the mining operations resume, those people who were living in that area they get promised things that are never fulfilled. Ultimately, they get themselves evicted from the land. So we do not know how to assist in that regard. And my final submission to this committee is that we are very much concerned about the lack of white people's participation in these proceedings because the land issue directly affects white South Africans and black South Africans. But we see the participation in these forums is mostly black. Where are other races of this country? Because the land issue affects all of us. And in conclusion, we would like to say, we support the upgrading of the Land Tenure Act, which we think it is the right step towards the amendment of Section 25 of the Constitution, which will give back the land to our people as promised by our Constitution. I thank you. Thanks, Ndade uh, Sipom Tembu. We really appreciate and thank the councillor on our behalf for sending you. That is the spirit of public participation in this uh, COVID uh, regulated environment. And we really appreciate that you have been able amongst others to, as a what committee, to be able to come and interact with us. Please stay locked on for an interaction later on. Honorable members, can I then request uh, Nakile Makubela from a community member from Pumalanga has logged on also to do the presentation. Uh, thank you, Honorable. Uh, thank Mama you so Kubela. much. Mema Kubela, let me interrupt you. For the better clarity and able to hear others, can I request other participants that we mute our videos so that we don't interfere with the signal here, Mema Kubela? Can we continue, Mema Kubela? Uh, thank you uh, so much, uh, Honorable. Nagile uh, Makupumalanga, in Chief Albert Lutuli Municipality, 
uh, coming from a place called Egulindeni, a, a, a township. Uh, and also to thank you so much uh, for the invitation that I also uh, uh, have a bite and uh, uh, support uh, the work of government uh, uh, of our Republic of South Africa. Uh, Mama Honorable, Mama, yes, ma'am. Is it possible just for two minutes to switch on your video that we see you? Then later on you can mute it just for registration on this platform. It's live streamed. Oh, okay. Okay, thank you, ma'am. It's just that uh, the place where I am is not uh, uh, quite okay. No, it's fine. I don't know if you can see me now. We can see you. We wanted to see you. Then yeah. later on, you can switch it off because we are on live streaming on YouTube channels, on our Facebook page, on uh, all these channels that we are using here. Yes, ma'am. All right. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Chairperson. As, a, as a, I have introduced myself and indicated that I'm from uh, Egulindeni, a township in Pumalanga, a very rural uh, a township from also a rural municipality. Uh, I must uh, indicate, uh, Chairperson, that uh, uh, this bill uh, comes at a right time especially not now that our democracy has uh, matured uh, massively. And now that a lot of uh, community members uh, understand uh, uh, what uh, is meant uh, uh, when we are speaking about the issues uh, of land and also ownership uh, uh, of that land uh, thereof. Uh, historically, as a Black... Uh, as Blacks, Chairperson, uh, we were very disadvantaged because even now the areas at which we are living, we do not really own them. Uh, so this bill came come at a time where we will be able, it will enable uh, us uh, uh, that we, 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 we kind of own the land that we live in so that even when it comes to where we also want to improve in terms of uh, 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 the land that we had, we are able to do that. Uh, we all know that for any community, as 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 we we know that the structures uh, uh, of a, a community starts in fam in a family. For any community, uh, for them to to live well where they are, they need to be able to have land, whether it's for, whether the land they just want to occupy for residency, whether they want to farm uh, uh, or any other thing. As I said that I'm coming from a rural area where we also have cows, uh, cattle, but do not have a place where they can graze a, a, a chairperson. Mine will be also to indicate that it. May it also speak about supporting uh, women so that us as women in our communities are not deprived an opportunity uh, uh, to own land simply because of our gender. And uh, 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 the patriarchy that we live on is, is also an indication that most of the time men are the ones who are seen as being heads of families and also the But um, autumn comes to uh, when you, uh, a, a wife will be uh, uh, to support uh, uh, his men. And then when it happens that you are married to a certain family and then your husband dies, automatically the land that you may have occupied with a, a, a your husband at the time will then be transferred automatically to the next of kin or the brother to, to your wife. But Chairperson, without uh, taking a lot of time, I would like to say, uh, uh, as a member of a community uh, in Pumalanga, in Chief Albert Luchuli, Egulindeni, we support the work of government and the and the progress that has been made thus far uh, uh, to where we are today, hoping uh, uh, that uh, the bill will be taken uh, uh, as soon as possible and then it becomes uh, uh, an act where it can be implemented to assist a uh, 
ordinary South Africans. Chairperson, thank you very much. Thanks, uh, Mayor Makubela. Um, Dr. Manyanze, Dr. Manyanze, do we have any other presenter lined up at this point? Hmm? Manyanze, do we have anybody? It's a phone name. Hmm? Do we have anybody? No. No, we don't have anyone. Okay. Honorable members, like I indicated, we were expecting other three presenters at 12. Before they logged in, let's afford uh, your good selves opportunity to interact with the presentation of Anda uh, Desipom Tembu, who is a ward committee member in Pumalanga, and uh, Menakile Makuvela, who is a community member also from Pumalanga. Um, Mesho. Hello, Honorable Mesho. Yes. No, uh, me, uh, 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 let me say that um, I think uh, the, the presenters have presented, then we really welcome their presentations, and then that. Uh, they are clear on what really is needed, and we are also happy with Bon that Mapula Muwe Mashwa that they have really indeed explained the stand of our government, and we are happy. And I don't have any question really. I I think they've clarified matters very well, and I think as the as, as a part of the committee member, somewhere somehow I don't have any question. Thank you. Thanks, uh, Honorable Stein. Thank you, Chairperson, and also thank you to the presenters, Chair. Um, I agree, Chairperson. I think there's many, many outstanding issues that, that need to be clarified. Um, I uh, was also listening to uh, the first presenter, Mr. Mtembu, regarding the issues that they are experiencing in their community. Um, he asked the question about where the white people are, and it is, it's a valid question. I think last week we have dealt with, with some presentations regarding that. Chairperson, but also the issue of the mining uh, um, uh, 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 industry. That, that comes onto land and especially in areas where people don't have tenure security. I, I think it's something for us to take note of as the portfolio also, um, because in the past we have seen clashing rights uh, and in many uh, cases, the mining rights take preference over agricultural land, Chair. So it is um, good that we are reminded of that. Thank you, Chairperson, to all the presenters. No questions from my side. Thanks, Honorable Stein. Honorable Kabekulu. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Chair. No question except for the comment regarding the, the mining as opposed to agriculture. I understand the concern has been always with the, the, the portfolio committee that uh, it's, it seems uh, most productive agricultural land is, is being taken by mining uh, 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 magnates. So that's a, a main worry because if you could hear Mr. Mtembo, he was putting it that uh, the, the community out there uh, really believe and, and, and uh, subscribe to agriculture as, as opposed to, to mining. That's the concern I have, Jefferson. Thank you. Thanks, uh, Honorable Kadekulu. Honorable Mbabama. Thank you, Chair. Um, Chair, I would just like to ask Dadem Tembu. He said that he thinks that the bill will take care of the social ills that they are uh, experiencing uh, yeah. in that third Kubande ward. How does he see the bill assisting or, 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 or you know, alleviating these social ills that he was talking about. He spoke about farm evictions. He spoke about farm murders, which is a big concern at the moment. 
And uh, in my mind, how does he see the bill exactly assisting? Is that when Zandoni le bill kanye 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 ukungeta ukuba in social ills zinga biko? And omnye umbuzo wamku ye uti. Do you think that Jenga Magu Kone's evictions ne matters in Jena? Is it because uh, of the social of the uh, land question that has not been resolved? Is is that why there is so much disturbance, uh, if I can call it that, uh, uh, in your area? Thank you very much, Chair. Thanks, Honorable Mbavama. Honorable Kapa. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Chair. Let me also join my colleagues in uh, appreciating and the presentation from the presenters. Only one referring to oh, Mr. Mtem, Mr. Mpumalang. He raised a concern over the absence or the absence of participants, white participants. I, sus I think this uh, concern maybe is a, is a pregnant. I would like I would like him to elaborate on this uh, concern because. Being a concern, it means that yeah, there are some suspicions, there are some other things that he can think he thinks they can be attended or addressed. Maybe this will assist the committee as well, because uh, at the end of the day, it, this it may be part of the understanding or it, it, it criticism in the presentation or the approach of the committee that it was only attended by so many people or by such people. But maybe this elaboration, especially in the nature of the of the suspicions, which I think may be valid, but it would assist the committee if maybe can elaborate on that. Thank you, Chair. Thanks, uh, Honorable Kapa. Honorable Briet. Thank you, Chairperson. Um, Chairperson, no questions from my side, but I think, um, and I want to thank the presenters for, for what they presented. And I just think, I, I just realized that um, I remember in the committee, we spoke about the amendments that we're currently handling and then the bowl or the act in, in its totality. And I think a lot of what the um, speakers have said today actually reiterates what we've done over the, the last three days of public participation and that there are a lot more issues than just these current amendments that us as a committee will have to look at and will have to um, take a decision on and will will maybe have to to ask the department about in terms of in terms of the bill because there are so many uncertainties because there are so many things that are not being addressed or that are unconstitutional within that in this bill um, but that is just from my side an opinion um, regarding all of the presenters that I've noticed and and what they have said thanks thanks uh, Mebriet Tatenoku honorable Mastipa uh, thank you, Chair. I think I'm uh, basically covered by everyone uh, that have spoken. Uh, the issue, I think, remains that uh, maybe, you know, we need to understand why uh, the issue of saying why are the whites not participating or not many whites participating. And I think, Chair, you need to draw back the attention to the uh, presenters as to why this bill and what is the purpose of it, you know, in terms of why have they been invited? Because this bill is really towards addressing the issue of women who did not have the uh, the right to own land or to inherit, you know, a piece of uh, land, you know, uh, in certain circumstances. And I think that uh, you can really assist uh, the the presenters in terms of really ensuring that um, they are called to be here is really to assist us in really placing their objections and obviously uh, they are, uh, you know, seconding of the particular bill that is before us or making inputs into this particular bill in terms of how they see it uh, being penned out at the end. Thanks very much. Thanks, uh, Honorable Masipa. I don't see Honorable Montredi on the participation list. It's like he's fallen off. Dr. Montredi, are you there? Not. Yeah. From my side, let me also 
just take from what Honorable Masipa is saying, Honorable Members. Deliberately, I haven't spoken about the purpose of the bill to the presenters. Two things from my side. At times when you do that, I've realized that uh, the presenters come prepared. Once you start uh, showing them the purpose or whatever, at times it diverts them or it throws them off. Now, I think it is also important from our observations that we're doing here to check the level of understanding of this bill from different members or from different presenters. And it is something that uh, at the end, when we have our own time and wrapping up, I think we should elevate. Because you know that even on research, normally you have a pilot study. Unfortunately, with our processes, we don't have just to check if there's common understanding on what you seek to achieve with the study you're researching on. Now, I have not wanted to say to, to the presenters, this is what we called you for and everything, because at times, sometimes doing that, like I'm saying, you keep them out of alignment, they come prepared, and now you talk something else. So it's something that we're noting, uh, Honorable Masipa, and if it helps, we will do that and continue to remind uh, the presenters on that. Let me appreciate uh, the Tembu your presentation. And likewise, I would want to know your interest on the white sector, the white people of this country. Or what do you think we would gain if they become part of this presentation? And we appreciate those others that has been coming to present. I must uh, indicate to you that uh, for sure you have been following these presentations, this public hearing. There has not been substantial member, uh, numbers, but there has been here and there them coming over. I would want us also to, to, to hear from you on that one. We take note of your call for public awareness or education for this bill in our communities. And I think through provincial offices, this matters even post this uh, public hearings. If it's passed and everything, we would need to go down and continue to educate our people. My challenge is on the issue of economic activities. Yes, it's a challenge, like Honorable Kebekul is saying, that agricultural land gets uh, now prospected into mining activities. But because you place this under the economic activities in your world, besides our mayor, our people being evicted, are there job opportunities for the locals in these mining activities? Two, as the World Committee member, together with your councillor, have you made efforts to interact with other organizations or other formations, NGOs, or whatever, that could be able to help your community in terms of uh, farm evictions. Because I think in this one, we need to join hands. We can't do it alone. It is a problem and a challenge that we really fully understand when you say at times it becomes even difficult you are barred from going into these farms by the new owners. Have you tried to look around or search around? We are not here to promote any NGOs or formations, but have you checked around? Where else can you find help and interact with such organizations? Mena Kile, uh, our community member from Pumalanga, Mema Kubela. In as much as you appreciate this bill and you see that it's the right step in the right direction, do you have challenges as community members, especially women, that you think this bill will be able to resolve? I'm trying to search your understanding on this bill so that we just don't come and think that we're having the common understanding what are the challenges? As Ntatema Kubiala has indicated, there are so many social ills that this bill will be able to resolve. In your own experience, why are you appreciating 
and of supporting this bill. Thanks. Can we start with Ntate Mtembu to respond to those questions? Then we'll come to Mema Kubela in that order. Unmute Ntate Mtembu. Unmute your microphone. Yes. Yes, First, I would like to start with the question of white participation. Uh, we as South Africans need to be very, very clear about this issue. Whenever you touch the land issue, it pokes a pain in a lot of white South Africans because the land is in the hands of Africans. Why South Africans always run away when we talk about the land issue? We cannot be able to sort out the land issue without their participation. The constitution allows them to be part of any deliberations in this country. Mm. But they are staying away from these uh, forums. Makes one to wonder if they are really, really serious in solving the land issue in this country. We as what committee members, we even see these things in our meetings. You can call a white meeting. You can have any government official coming to your area. You can have any function of government coming to the area. You will not see white South Africans participating in this government functions. Are we a rainbow nation? Are we a non-racial South Africa? Are white South Africans willing to come and join the party? My raising this point is actually a challenge to white South Africans to say to them, we have a problem in this country. And this problem includes you because you are part and parcel of the problem. So we cannot solve this problem without you. We do this because we want to avoid a situation whereby the white South Africans say, ah, you people are doing your own thing. You're not telling us what we're doing. So we're not part of it. That's why I say it will be very much important for this committee, this parliament, with the power they could have, we do not have this power at local level, to please conscientize white South Africans to be part of the discussions in this country because we all live here. They need to be part and parcel of the discussions in this country. They need to be part and parcel of all the programs of the government of this country, irrespective of their political affiliations. I think I'll address that. It is white South Africans who are actually buying back the land that was given back to our people. It is white farmers that are evicting black people from our land. It is the very same white farmers who get killed in their farms. So it is important that they become part and parcel of these forums. We need them to be part of the solutions because they are part of the problem. And then question number two, <coughs> if I remember it very correctly, I think it's member Kubele asked me about the social ills caught by how will the bill assist in solving all of this. <clears throat> all social ills, if you look at them, are structural in this country. Very, very structural. When I grew up in Britain, We're losing you in Tatum oh. Tambu. Mute your video so that you become okay. clearer. The video? Please switch off your I video so to... that we can hear you. I think okay. we have a network challenge, yes. You can switch off your you video. Yeah, but you're still okay. visible on your video. Ooh. 
So, okay, just hold on. You can try to continue. Let's check if your network will be able to sustain you. Okay. I was saying that um, when I grew up, the first building that you saw when you get into our township was a parade where they used to sell in the hole where our fathers used to go and drink. These social is that say that they are structural, so they need to change. So most of our people do not have access to land is that exist. So if we look at this bill, it will give power to women to own land. And when you own land, you have means of production. And when you have means of production, you can do anything on that land. And if this bill can actually down to understand that the thing is changing and shifting in South Africa. And the way of thinking in our people will begin to shift and realize that not only mining can only give them a break, but even agriculture can also give them something to do because most of the people here are now rushing into this mining sector because that's where most of the job opportunities are and they are neglecting the agricultural side, which is known to be produced. We have lost to them to explain. South Africa knows exactly what it is. Can you hear me now? Yes. Again. Mm -hmm. You are audible now. Can other members participate? Please switch off your videos. That them when probably you can switch off your video so that we give him the better connection on the other side. Yes, continuing that them, then we thank you. It is so well known to all of us, so there is no me to label them one by one, but they are caused mainly by unemployment, in particular to young people and women who do not have access to the land. So this bill will give women the right to own land, and when they own this land, they can open small farming holdings, like the production of egg and chicken, because most of them have actually asked us here in the world that it is like small business. But due to the fact that they do not have access to the land, poverty continues to is the mining sector seems to be the favorite employer here. But unfortunately, what we've seen happening in the job opportunities that are happening in this area, we find that the mining companies come to the area with their own employees to operate here, at least the unemployed. we have lost you. You can switch off your video to assist us. the local community can actually feel is the very same position that the local people are fighting for with the outsiders because most of the mines they bring their qualified operators into the area and leave no space for employment for the local people here if we can assist that in that regard what has happened in these communities is that you find that they are now too many competing organizations fighting for the same thing. Most of them, they pose as employment committees. Some of them, they pose as business forums. 
and present themselves to the mines. At the end of the day, we don't know what really happens there because nothing yields results of these organizations get bribed by the mining companies, given jobs to their friends and families. Now with the what committee and the councillor, it becomes very, very difficult for us to participate in that space because we were told that we should stay out of these committees and let the communities form their own organizations to deal with the mines. Okay. Reason being, <laughs> yes. Reason being, if the councillor goes there and speak to the mining management about any job opportunities, when he comes back, then people stay and say, ah, only the people who belong to such and such a political party will get jobs there. So the directive was that we should stay out of these mines and let the communities themselves form structures that will be able to deal with the mines. But the mines are so powerful and so knowledgeable, they know that these committees do not have the knowledge and the power to seek any documentation that will help these communities to advance their cause. At the end of the day, the problem remains unresolved. When you move to the farm matters in the area, most of these farm matters that are happening here are not political, but they are criminal in nature. And in some instances, we have found that most of the farm matters that have been killed here, they've been killed because of revenge. Uh, we find that uh, a white farmer will evict the family in the middle of the night, chase them out and throw them to the street. Five years or 10 years later, those children grow up and they come back and find the, the farmer and kill him just to revenge the pain that has caused them. So it's not political, it's mostly criminal. And some people go to the farms just to steal a cow, maybe a sheep. Unfortunately, the farmer comes around with a gun, then the fighting ensued and someone dies. This is what we have found when it comes to the farm killings in the area. Uh, the farm evictions, this happens all the time, but it's never reported in the media. And because this area is a very, very small area, but the evictions are happening all the time because people do not know their rights, that they have a right to stay in that area. When these mining magnates come in and buy the farm, they don't care what happens. All they want are the minerals. And if there are tenants living there, they will move them by any force, by any means. And at local level, it is very, very difficult for us to get involved. We can only go to the local police station. And if the police cannot help us, we feel very, very useless. Sometimes we go to those farms, the white men will just throw a line and say, if you cross here into my land, I'll kill you, I'll shoot you. The police are there and there's nothing that we can do. So we feel very, very powerless. We wonder how is the government going to be able to enforce all these beautiful laws that will continue to make and continue to amend. The important thing is to make what they are doing. Stop acting like as if they own the land. We always go there to negotiate with them, but the way they treat us bad, maybe that's what results into these farm killings. I'm sorry, but I have to be honest with them. They must join the party. They are part and parcel of this problem. They want to act like as if we have to beg to be in South Africa. We have to beg to walk around in this land. Can you imagine being killed just for urinating outside the fence of a white man and he comes around and shoot you and he tells that you were trespassing? If the media does not get this matter exposed, these people will continue to die. A lot of school children cannot go to school because they must go through a gate that belongs to Mr. Van der Meven. And if Mr. Van der Meve has closed that gate, they cannot pass through because they'll be shot and killed because they look like baboons. And nothing happens to the family. Mm -hmm. And this makes us angry. These things are not reported in the media. 
you hear them from small families there and there, especially the Ndebele people that go to these farms, settle there, when the time comes for Ingoma. I don't understand why you have to write letters and letters and letters to make the white man understand that it's time for Ingoma. Thank you, ma'am. Can we stick also like honorable members indicated towards the bill seeks to achieve? We understand so much the pressure and the challenges that our people are having in terms of issues just you raise. But for this public hearing, we would request that we restrain ourselves and deal with the matters on the table. You done with all answering the questions and comments made? I think I have. All right. Menakile, Makubela. Yes. Menakile, comments from yourself? Yes, ma'am. Uh, thank you, uh, Chairperson. Chairperson, you, you ask a question to say, do I have any experiences uh, as far as uh, where I see that uh, perhaps rights of women uh, uh, and were not protected uh, uh, in the act that we, we previously had and what uh, uh, this bill is trying to, to, to achieve. Um, as I have indicated, Chairperson, that I'm from a rural uh, 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 area uh, in Bumalanga, uh, Chairperson, and also coming from a polygamous uh, uh, family where my father had like uh, two wives and also my grandfather the same and uh, going back to my great grandfathers. Uh, I, I will say, Chairperson, uh, I have an experience. Uh, I can say it's personal because uh, it happened in the family where the two wives, the other wife has had boy children and the other one only had girl uh, uh, children uh, uh, in the family. And then because a uh, chairperson, uh, I must indicate that uh, uh, at some uh, at some point uh, uh, they they use rights, however, may not uh, 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 grant security to women or am I dependent. We lost you, Mayor Makuvela. Switch off your video and talk to us. Yes, you can continue. When a traditional family, like the one that I've just highlighted. Okay. You done, Ma? Thank you, Mema Kubela. Rea de Boham. Mema Kubela, are you still on the platform? Mama Kuvela, we have lost you. You are not audible. Mama Kuvela, Makubelo, you are no longer audible. The Tembu, please switch off your mic. We're having background voices from yourself. Thank you. We have lost Mema Kubelo. She was still on the platform, honorable members.
Can I get an indication from our staff if we have anybody who's uh, on the platform for presentation? Manyamza, are you with us? Is there anybody? Uh, Mr. Mashake is oh. a net chair. Come again? Mr. Mashake is, is trying to connect. Okay. Yes. He is here. I've just admitted. Okay. Yes. Can we go straight to Ntate Mashake? Indicate your organization, Ntate Mashake, and we must give you the platform in fear of losing you for connection problems that we experience now. Mr. Masake? Manyamza, can you assist in that regard? He's still connecting, ma'am. Oh, okay. Mama Kuvel. Yes, ma'am. We lost you as and when you were wrapping up. We couldn't hear a word of what you were saying. Oh, oh, my apologies. I think the connectivity this side is very problematic. Yeah, we can give you a minute to wrap up and conclude. Yes, I was just highlighting one of the experiences that we had in our family where because one of the wives uh, did not have a, an heir, which is by a, 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 a male child, and then he was, uh, all the land that belonged to him and the husband was taken to the brother of the husband, which is uh, uh, my uncle in this scenario. Uh, but when you looked at, at how the family was structured, uh, the women was responsible for food production in that land that they were using. And now every time they had to plow or, or for whatever household uh, economics that they required, they will have to go and beg mm -hmm. from the uncle to say, can you allow us to be able to do uh, uh, this? Every time they must consult, uh, uh, that is where, because we, we also from a tribal area, the tribal laws does not protect, uh, uh, did not, was not able to protect a uh, hair. Uh, and when you go to also the Western laws, you find out because uh, the structure of the family uh, could not allow her to, to, to have rights to that land. She was not also protected in that regard. That's a, a part of the experience that uh, uh, I have a, uh, uh, experience a, a chairperson. Thank you. Thanks, Mema Kubelo. Thanks so much for sharing your story with us. And uh, I think that is the experience that we wanted to really establish your understanding of what this bill seeks to achieve. Is uh, our next presenter connected at this point? Metaben, can you please yes. Who is Galaxy A7 2017? Who is Galaxy A7 2017 participants? And they are trying to connect the audio at this point. Who has just joined us with Galaxy A7 2017? We're looking for our presenters, and the gadget is not named. <laughs> Yeah, the audio is giving them a problem. I can see here from the screen. They are connected. Galaxy A7 2017, please identify yourself. Unmute your microphone and speak to us. Can all other participants mute their microphones? Galaxy A7 has just joined us. Can you please identify yourself? Uh, my name is Yabonga and my surname is Mot. Oh, okay. One of our presenters for today. 
Excuse me. You coming for presentation at this year, Bong? Yes. Oh, okay. Um, can we please hand over to your good self? Just switch on your video for registration. Sia Bonga Mota is a community member from Pumalanga. On our program, honorable members, it's number 17. We're going to hand over straight to you, Ntatesia Bonga. You have 10 minutes to present to us, and please stay locked on after your presentation because we want to interact with you based on what you would have presented to us. You can switch on your video just for two minutes and you can mute it so that you don't have challenge of connection of our network. Over to you, Tatesia Bonga. And mute both your microphone and your video. Are you winning that this year, Bonga? Your microphone is still off and your video is not showing also. IT, can you help us in that regard? Help her and mute him. Seems like we lost him again. Manyamza, do we have anybody? Not yet, Chair. Are we having the IT staff on the platform? We seems to have it, to be having challenges with mem with participants trying to unmute themselves and unmuting their videos. Is there anybody helping us in that regard on the platform? We do not have an IT person when, when oh, they- um, I, Let me throw it to the honorable members of this portfolio committee, we just had uh, Desia Bonga, he's now disconnected. It's 16 minutes before the lunch hour. What is your proposal? What do you propose we do at this point? I have indicated earlier on uh, honorable members that uh, plenary starts at three o'clock. And I would want us to push so that uh, we get a breather in between finishing here in this committee and uh, locking one on to plenary because it will be chaos if all members has to leave me here. I'm also participating in the afternoon session in plenary. So I'm trying my best to push Chef, that. Yama. We've got Mr. Matlake back. Okay. Thank you. Mr. Masake, you can unmute your microphone. Dr. Masake, you welcome to this portfolio committee meeting. Uh, this is a public hearing on the upgrade of the rail of the land tenure bill. We want you to introduce yourself and the constituency or organization you're representing. You're having 10 minutes to do your presentation. 
and afterwards please stay logged in so that we interact with what you presented over to you uh, thanks uh, colleagues uh, my name is Temasak. i'm from Pumalanga. at the moment i'm representing uh, mapulani heritage council which is formed by legal uh, entities uh, derived from uh, land claimants. It is our view that uh, this land uh, bill, it will uh, advantage us in terms of the traditional leaders who are selling stands at 2,000 rand to 5,000 rand while they are getting paid from uh, you know the, the government. And also they share the land with their colleagues, uh, denying uh, the actual uh, people's land to access the land. Now, when it comes to the land claimants, it's very much critical because uh, the claimed land must be given to the people whose families were forcefully evicted from specific farms. And also the productive land may have a uh, shareholding rights. They, may, they can form uh, ventures with uh, you know those who are holding uh, land in terms of uh, uh, productive land such as mining and also agriculture so that uh, they can benefit from them in terms of uh, social economic activities so that they can alleviate the poverty but now as it stands we realize that the, the chiefs are having advantage by selling the land without consulting people now, it is our view that this, uh, this bill, if can be uh, finalized, it will now perpetuate the stealing of the land from the people by the, the chiefs while they are uh, you know, getting paid from the, the, the government. Now, case in, case in case here in Mapula and Bushpark Ridge, we have launched a, a grievance against certain traditional authorities who are selling our land and also demarcating, you know, a residential, uh, the, the, the grazing land into a residential area without the informing, uh, uh, you know, the actual people on the ground. This they are doing that, you know, undermining, you know, uh, the legitimate of the view that uh, this uh, tenure bill should be kept on hold and also uh, most of people that were never you know uh, workshop in terms of the Leonard Chen bill now remember that uh, uh, it is better to uh, finalize the documentation of the bill into uh, uh, indigenous languages now we see mostly the government now that we have elected they are using a foreign language in terms of, uh, you know, writing uh, the, 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 the contents of the, 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 the bill, which is making it difficult for the people to understand and to comprehend. Now, I think it is our view as Mapulani Heritage Council that the bill in itself should be written in the local languages so that people, they can participate fully in determining their future. I thank you. Thanks, Ntate uh, Masaka, honorable members. That is uh, Mapulani Heritage Council, which is number 12 on your program. We were given Peregen uh, Chilwani. Instead, Mr. Masaka has been here to present. Do we have uh, anybody, May Nyamza? Can I have an indication if we have somebody? There, there is someone on the lobby chair, but I did not admit him yet because the detail, the identity okay, is funny. Can I admit him so that you ask him immediately so that I can remove him if he's not part of us? Okay. Thank you. Thank 
Hello. They are still struggling to connect the audio. Their video was um, visible earlier on. Participants who have just joined us, can you hear us now? Can you can you hear us now? Those who have just joined us. Mamasa, please mute your 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 microphone. Honorable Maso, Honorable Maso, mute your microphone. Can you please mute your microphone, participants on the platform? Those just we just admitted, please identify yourself and the organization you are representing. Bauli setang kore joina, rekupali kisi si eveli rebulele kore le tuako si teon se si fing. The participants that has just joined us with a long name on the gadget numbers and letters. Can you please identify yourselves? We're giving you a chance to identify yourselves and your organization so that you know if you are here to present. Your microphone is muted, but you are still with us. Mayamza? Chair? Yeah, they, they, they're not responding. I'll remove them, Chair. We can continue. Honorable members, please remove them because we cannot sit with uh, people that we don't know who they are. I put uh, a suggestion to you earlier on that please advise. It's lunchtime. Ntate Masaka has just presented. Probably we take uh, a bite on what he presented on before we go on lunch. Is there any member who wants to talk to the presentation of Mapulaneng Heritage Council? Mestain, you were earlier on on the platform and uh, we were interrupted. No, Chairperson, it's fine. I just wanted to ask, um, you know, if we have any other people uh, present that we can finish them before we go for lunch, but I don't have any questions. Thank you, Chairperson. Thanks, uh, Ms. Tain. Mayamza, do we have anybody? Don't have anyone, Chair. Okay. Honorable members, Tate Masaka has indicated that the bill is advantageous to them, as it will also help to deal with the challenges they are having in tribal lands where leaders are selling stands at times for about 2,000 to people and all these challenges that he alluded to. Is there anybody who wants to ask him any point of clarity or a question? That's the only presentation that we had. I want us to dispose this presentation off before we suggest uh, to go on break. I I've noted you in Tate Mukwenako words. Let me give to honorable members first. Okay. I have a question for Tate Mushlaki. Mushlaki. Yes, honorable Mbambama. Thank you, Chair. Uh, Mr. Matlake, I'd like to, you said that uh, traditional leaders are selling stands for 2003, I mean, 2003,000, et cetera. 
uh, which is, I think, a very wrong practice. But what I'd like to know is, are they selling to outsiders as well? Meaning that, uh, are they selling to outsiders or are they selling to residents, people you know have rights to that communal land, people who have been there for forever? Who are, who are they selling to exactly? Maybe that should be my question. And um, yes, maybe let me stop there. I would just like to know who are they selling to? And is it for residential purposes or are they selling mine, mine uh, companies as well? Yeah. Thanks, Ma'am Bavama. Honorable Kabekulu, you have any question? No, no question except to say. Uh, one would have been interested in knowing the the manner and the and the and the and the way the the administration uh, uh, operates in the area, where then uh, it is as it is alleged that uh, chiefs are selling the land to certain individuals. Historically, what was the the practice when uh, uh, um, when somebody wanted to when somebody wanted to to join the, the, the community in the area. I thought that's why I'm not going to be able to do that. Thanks, Honorable Kabekulu. Honorable Masa, please mute. I you know, see you trying to connect the audio, and we're having yeah. so much noise from your gadget. Hmm. Honorable Briet, do you have anything? No, no thanks, Chair. I'm covered. Honorable Kappa? I'm, I'm covered, Chair. Thank you. Honorable Masipa? Uh, I'm covered, Chair. Thanks very much. Thanks. That, uh, is there anybody that I've left out? Honorable Masipa, are you connected now? Not. Can I then give uh, Ndate Masaka to respond to those questions and comments? Oh, sorry, Ndate Masaka, before you, you, you go there, I saw Ndate Mukwena raising a hand and pointing at me. Ndate Mukwena. Usually what we do at this point, we allow only honorable members, but because you said you want to be here, I don't know if you want to interact or is there anything that you wanted to bring to our attention? From the audience, Ntate Mukwena, you were, you were raising your hand on your video and pointing at me. Am I, am I fine in terms of mood? And uh, can you hear audible. me? You are audible. Okay. No, I thought uh, uh, for, 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 for assisting on that issue of stands being sold by kings, Kings, which are uh, co contributing to the government, government uh, paying them salaries. I wanted to respond on the issue of the ownership, tribal land ownership. Can are they not allowed? To no, can we to give it to Ntate Masaka who's presenting? Like I yeah. said earlier, only we can only observe at this point. We don't okay. want it to be like yeah. Mapula yeah. Heritage Council. Yeah. We put in yeah. words in their mouth. Okay, that's no, fine. Yes, that the massacre. Is that the massacre still with us? <laughs> Do we still have our presenter here? Doesn't look like honorable members. Can we then agree to break for lunch? Uh, according to our program, we're breaking on until two o'clock. Is it fine with yourselves? Yeah. May I ask a question, Chair? Yes, ma'am. 
I would like to know, uh, since the plenary is starting at three, what is yes. expected? Uh, what is expected before we actually go on lunch? Can we cut mm -hmm. our lunch short, or what is it? What is going to happen exactly? Because ideally, we should actually uh, finish the meeting before three, so that we can pay yes. attention in the plenary. What? What? What yep. is your suggestion? What is the way forward? I have uh, spoken to the staff in the morning, indicated to them that at least half past two we must be done so that we allow members a 30 minutes break before they lock in. Because uh, apparently we're experiencing the same challenge of people that would say they will come present and they don't pitch up. That is why earlier on they said to me there are three presenters at 12. Dr. Manenza has been off the platform, if you have realized, because he's trying to check that. I said to them, when we come back from lunch, let's have everybody so that half past two, we close off the meeting. Thank you, Chair. That's what I wanted to be updated. Yes. Okay. Uh, okay. Honorable. Yes, ma'am. We, we do have... Oh, one that one 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 one. is back. Yes, yes. All right. Tate Bongani, Chabalala, quickly just uh, introduce yourself and your organization. We're going to give you uh, eight minutes to do the presentation because we were just locked in as and when we are breaking for lunch. Over okay. to you. Let's have a list number seven on your on your agenda. The draft program is number seven. You are supposed to speak between ten half past ten and eleven forty. Over to you, Mr. Chavalan. Yeah, I'm here at Mahugwe for agriculture. For can you hear me? We can hear you. We just wanted to see your face for a minute because we saw two people appearing on the screen. Your video is off. Can we see who's presenting? Who's Bongani Chavalala? Okay, okay, okay. Just for record and registration on this platform. Honorable Chair. Yes, no. This is Speak Matlake. You give it, you give me a chance to respond, but now if you are here, I want to respond. Yeah, you were off. Are you back online? Because I couldn't just wait for forever. Talk to the no. issues that has been raised. Ndate Chabalala, just hold on a minute. Ndate Matlake, please continue yeah. in two minutes. Yes. Yes, I wanted to respond in the question of historical, uh, how the, the, the pieces of land have been clinched. Remember that the traditional authorities, uh, people would gather to the traditional authorities and inform him that maybe they require a stand for extension of the family, then they will be given. Now, in terms of who the traditional uh, council are selling the land to people that we don't know in our area, some are foreign nationals, and without the consent of uh, the actual uh, community uh, uh, people of that particular area. So that is a serious challenge on us. So that is why we are raising this issue. And we have already raised this issue for relevant authorities. We are just waiting for their response. I submit. Thanks, uh, thanks, uh, Dr. Masake. Bongani Chabalala, you are on the platform now. Please unmute both your microphone and your your video. Bongani Chabalala. Yeah, you you don't have the best connection. You are on the platform. 
Yes, ma'am. I'm here to see it. I know about the culture, the project. At the end, you will know, but if you don't know through that project, we need the community or the king only. Yeah, together, ma'am. Yes, we, we, we hear you. Okay. Uh, uh, so for a long time, the that project starting at this place at Mahulbe. And the only person who working, or working outside, but not the person who stay at Mahulbe, they are not working there. Today we are conducting public hearings on the upgrading of land tenure bill. Right. Retiring mola o o rebatlang hu fiti sa jeka committee ya parliament o le kang hu thusa bomme ba South Africa gore ba fumane le fatshe le bone ba o ne le fatshe. Le ha le na le di challenge se tse dintse itseng tse lo re le batla hu thuswa ka tsona ka she gore shebelletse fela mola wana o o re batlang gore re tsebe gore na le a o supporta ka patshela lona batho ba makgopo yes okay yes okay okay ka ka thabela gore mmuso ka o ka go thusa ka gore le bomme ba 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 fuye matla a no o ba tswele go ileta le gona mo na magolwe but the Valley in Bombay, I think for a paper and city by the city of Gopoliti. Mami? Ronsaro, my medicine, that they have a land. Eh, eh, get on a bomb, but the big open city moon and a Mahogi, Bagay, the Uncle Politi, the one of a very mad. They got the other meeting. Yeah, they were high when we get the lower his. Thanks, honorable members. Tate Wangani Chavalala is saying they are supporting this bill because in Makulukwe they have women cooperatives that can really uh, gain out of uh, this bill. They would love such uh, cooperatives to be assisters in short. Is there any comment from our honorable members before we break for lunch? We're having a very difficult day today, like we indicated. We're going for plenary later on. Are we going for lunch? Yes, Ms. Dane. Yes, I would. No, just thanking the member for coming to make a presentation. I think it's important that we listen to people, even if it's like a challenging experience, Chair. Yes. Thanks, Ms. Dain. Any other comment? Are we done? Chairperson. Yes, Mr. Manenza. Before you break, we just thought it would be important to, to look at the agenda and explain the challenges we are facing. OK. Um, you remember to notice that uh, your, that's number two on the program, number four and number five have not spoken. <laughs> Can other participants please mute your microphones? We have, I uh, thank you. We have attempted to get in touch with those people. We, they, they, there is no response. Some of them okay. were been in touch since morning, but at this present moment, they, we can't get through. Some are ringing and there's no response. Okay. So we do know that some really are struggling with network uh, challenges. And number six, also it's the same situation. Um, one person that would have loved to make a presentation, but unfortunately is being in, involved in some other program on farms, 
is Lenny Kotsi working for women on farms. They, they said that they will submit a written um, submission to the committee because it seems that it's impossible for them to do it today. Um, so 14 is then, off also. It, yes, 14 is off also. And 11 as well is off. 17, 18, and 20. There is also no response. We've tried to speak to them. So those people, we, we, we will continue following up with them. It might happen then that even at two o'clock, we, we have not heard anything from them. We just want members to be aware of the challenge we're facing with regard to connect, connecting to these people that have confirmed that they'll be speaking today. Thank you. Okay. Thanks, uh, Dr. Manenza. Honorable members, that is the situation that uh, when we come back from lunch, We'll focus on number 17, 18, 20, if they've been able to be located. Those are scheduled to present between two and uh, the half past three that was put there, which is not possible. But these are the people that need to present in the afternoon. Can we break for lunch and come back at two and assess our situation then? Thank you, Chair. We agree.